Hi, grade nines. Um, so for today, I'm just um, going over the first lesson in the new unit. Um, so it's on algebraic expressions, uh, just going over some key terminology. Uh, so this lesson is a little bit uh, different because there's not actually a lot of math involved with it so far. Um, most of the examples are going to be uh, just going over, most of the lesson will just be going over keywords. Um, so I just want to make sure that we're clear on the terminology we're going to use throughout this new unit. Um, so now we're going to get, um, we're not going to get straight into solving equations, but we're kind of doing the precursor to that, talking about algebraic expressions uh, and what that means. So just a quick little note here. I know somebody had asked, uh, said that you were having issues viewing the PowerPoint. Uh, just a little heads up, you probably have to view it in the uh, slideshow display. Uh, so if you actually go to this little icon here at the corner, uh, if you click on that, it will actually show it to you as a PowerPoint there. Okay, so first things I wanna kind of go through are just um, the keywords here. So the first keyword is variable. And actually I've brought this word up a couple of times um, in the class. Um, so a variable is, uh, is basically a letter that represents a value that you don't know yet. And the reason it's called variable, the name kind of says it itself. Um, it's going to vary, right? Um, so it's not necessarily going to be one number all the time. It might be uh, different numbers depending on we, what we substitute, right? And this is a very important idea in math because when we're proving um, when we're proving that something is true, that a rule or you know whatever principle we have in math is actually correct, uh, we can't just prove it by showing a couple of examples of when it works. You actually want to show that it works for any number, right? Um, and generally speaking, when we're trying to represent something that um, represents any number, doesn't matter what it is, uh, we represent it with uh, variables or these letters that basically represent any number that we could have there. Uh, the next word that's important is coefficient. Coefficient is simply the number that goes in front of the variable. Um, and this is really, what this is, is the number that we multiply the variable by. Uh, sometimes it's actually called, um, the. Uh, it's, there's different names for it. We can call it the multiplicative constant of the variable, uh, but the most common word is coefficient. Basically, it's just the number that's in front of the variable, right? Uh, it basically tells you how, uh, what the variable is multiplied by. So for example, if I had five y, uh, technically what that means is, I have five times y or five y's, right? Um, that's really what I'm saying is at some number, and let's say, just to say the number is, just to go show you an example, let's say that my number y, um, let's say I'm subbing in a number, it's uh, three. Then I simply take five times three instead of five times y. Um, so again, the, the, the number in front is called a coefficient there. Um, we'll talk about what this actually means. We're not actually solving anything right now. We're just talking about terminology, okay? So if you ever hear the word coefficient, I'm talking about the number in front of the variable, right? It's what we multiply the variable by. Uh, an algebraic term is, <clears throat> sorry, algebraic term is, the, is a combination of variables and coefficients. So essentially it's the variable and the coefficient uh, put together. So for example, um, in 5y, we can see here that I have 5 and y. I'm just going to write this really big. This is the coefficient right here. Uh, whoops, I'm making a spelling error here. Coefficient, and then this right here is our variable, right? Um, so that's kind of the breakdown of this. And of course, it's the same for the other example. This is our coefficient. And the x right there is our variable. So again, these are just definitions. We're not actually doing any math yet. I just want to make sure that you are clear. Um, you're clear on what these words mean, right? Because uh, we're going to be using them a lot throughout um, this unit and also throughout math that you do in the future, right? So you want to make sure you know what it means. A um, couple more terms. Uh, algebraic expression. An algebraic expression is a combination of terms that are separated by addition or subtraction, right? Um, or sometimes, if you want to think of it differently, um, separated by positive and negative signs, right? If you want to think about adding positives and um, adding negatives, right? Um, so the, essentially we have, you're essentially combining the different terms together. So for example, 5y and 8x, um, if we looked at our last example there, if we combine them together in one expression, we can simply put 5x plus 8, uh, sorry, 5y plus 8x. Um, do not do something like this. Uh, and just kind of write them with a space. 
that doesn't really mean anything, right? Uh, we are going to talk about multiplying expressions, and generally speaking, um, <clears throat> sorry, multiplying terms. And generally speaking, when we when we multiply terms, we normally want to put a bracket around the different terms you're going to be multiplying. Again, I'm going ahead of myself here, um, and we'll talk about this in the next couple lessons. Uh, but for now, all I really want to, to be to make clear is that you do need to have. Um, when you're writing out the expression, you need to be clear what the operation is, right? Normally, when we talk about the algebraic expression, um, you're combining these terms by either adding or subtracting them, right? Um, we are going to look at examples where you can multiply terms, uh, divide terms. You can do a lot of different operations with them. Um, the degree of a term is the variable's exponent, right? Uh, so if you have one variable, uh, then it's just going to be the exponent of that variable. Um, if it's more than one variable, it's the sum of the exponents of the powers. So for example, if I have 2x squared, um, my degree in this case would simply be 2, because that's the exponent of the variable. Uh, but if I have something like x cubed uh, y, that basically means take some number x, uh, multiply it by itself three times, and then multiply it by another number y. Um, and in this case, our degree is 4, because we have to add the degree of the variable x and the degree of the variable y. And even though you don't see it, the degree in this case is actually one. And this is what throws people off a little bit because they look at this and they say, well, there's actually no exponent. But remember, if I just write y and I'm thinking about what exponent is actually there, it's really just y to the power of one. Um, we're gonna be using this idea of an imaginary one a couple times, right? Um, I think we've seen it in the last unit and we're gonna see it again here when we talk about um, powers. So just kind of watch out for that. Uh, so kind of putting this all together, I just want to make sure everyone's kind of clear on what all these different words mean. So uh, first thing, I'm going to start actually, um, yeah, I'll start on the left here. So each of these, um, each of these values, sorry, each of these, uh, I want to say terms, I don't want to use the actual word, but terms, each of these are terms are, are terms for that, uh, because they are uh, made up of a number, right, a coefficient, and a variable there, right? And in this case, the variable just happens to have an exponent, that's fine. Um, this is also a term as well. This one that we see at the very end is also 36, is actually technically a term, even though you don't see a variable. And this is where people get confused because they say, well, isn't it, um, you know, isn't, isn't that the whole definition of a term that it's a coefficient multiplied by a variable? But technically, it does have a variable. Um, and if we kind of keep in the pattern here, it seems like the variable is x. And if you're wondering, well, where is the x? Well, if I take x and I raise it to the power of 0, then technically, this is equal to 1. And the reason for that is because any number raised to the power of 0, and hopefully you remember this from elementary school, any number raised to the power of 0 is actually 1. So really, what I'm doing is taking 36 times 1. Um, and so this is technically the, a number itself, just by itself in an expression, is technically viewed as a term. Um, I think I just used the next word, expression. The expression is, the algebraic expression is basically the combination of the terms, right? So this is an expression because I have uh, 52x squared uh, negative 9x, or I can think of subtracting 9x, um, and I have 36 all combined together. So these three terms combined together make an expression. Um, and on the, going on the right-hand side here, let's look at a couple more terms here. Uh, sorry, terminology. I don't want to say terms because that's a different word. Um, coefficient is simply the number that is in front of the variable, which is m in this case. And of course, I kind of talked about this already. A number that is by itself is called a constant. Uh, constant basically just means that it's the number on its own, no variable, um, but it's still a part of the expression. And the last big thing I want to go over is what an equation is. And obviously, you're probably looking at me being like, I know what an equation is, but an equation with algebra, basically, we need to obviously state that two different expressions, in this case, the expression on the left is equal to the expression on the right. Um, and so that's what an equation is, is you actually have to specify that there are two different values that seem that seem different, but are actually equal to each other. And that's what an equation is there. So I hope these uh, these words kind of make sense. Um, and like I said, I want you to get kind of comfortable with what they mean. So if I ever talk about a term, I hope you know what I'm talking about, right? A term is basically the combination of a number or coefficient and a variable, which is the letter, right? 
um, when we talk about coefficient, I'm simply talking about the number in front of the uh, variable. When I talk about expression, I'm talking about a combination of terms. Uh, so I hope this all kind of makes sense so far. So the next key word is, and we're gonna be using this a lot, is like terms. Like terms are, uh, are terms that have the same variable and also the same exponent. So it has to have two conditions there. Not only the same variable, but the same exponents. Um, so as an example here, and let's just do a couple, and oh, just before I get to that, um, key thing to remember here, numbers uh, or constants, we talked about that word, are actually always considered like terms with each other, right? So numbers will always be each other's like terms. And again, the reason for that is because technically it's multiplied by a variable or any variable raised to the power of zero, right? Because it's multiplied by one. So numbers are always like terms with each other. That's really what you have to remember there. So are these, so let's look at a couple examples. Are they like terms or not? Uh, so we have 2x and 5x. So we can see here that 2x and 5x are definitely like terms. Uh, because they have the same, oops, sorry, went too far there. Uh, they have the same variable, x, and they also have the same exponent. Now, you're probably wondering, how do I know they have the same exponent? Well, they do have the same exponent because this is exponent 1 and this is exponent 1. So they do have the same exponent in this case. Uh, the next one, 8x and 8x squared. These are also, uh, so these ones, you can, might look at it and think, okay, well, they almost look like like terms. Uh, because they have the same variable, um, but they don't actually have the same exponent. This has exponent two, and this has exponent one. I know I don't actually see it there, but it's exponent one. So because they have different exponents, so they have different exponents, then you know that they are not going to be uh, like terms. So those ones are definitely not like terms. And the last one here, 9ab and 3ba. So this one gets a little bit tricky. It uh, looks very similar, but looks slightly different at the same time. Um, and a lot of people might look at this quickly and say, I don't think that they are like terms. Um, they actually are. And the reason for this is because even though they're the, a, the two variables are written in a different order, a, b, and b, a, it doesn't actually make a difference. And the reason for this is kind of goes back to uh, just basic numbers. In numbers, with numbers, when we look at just regular numbers, if I give you three times five, and then I give you five times three, I think everyone can kind of see that they're both equal to 15. It doesn't actually make a difference. Three times five and five times three is still gonna give me 15. Um, it's the same thing with variables. And remember variables simply represent numbers you don't know. So we're just saying, if I have some number A and some number B and I multiply them, that's gonna be the exact same result as the sum number b multiplied by sum number a. It shouldn't make a difference at all because when we multiply numbers, um, we still get the same result. Uh, sorry, when we, when we multiply numbers in a different order, we still get the same result. That's what I meant to say. So even if I switch a and b around, um, when I multiply, I still get the same answer. So these two are actually like terms because uh, they still have the same variable and they still have the same exponent. So the last one is um, definitely uh, an example of like terms. Uh, so hopefully that kind of makes sense. I just realized there's not probably a lot of examples and I'll definitely add some as I, as I go along here. I'm just realizing I probably should put a couple more examples. So <clears throat> we can do a couple more just to make sure you kind of got this. Um, so if we have something like um, 4x to the power of 3 and 6x squared. So is this a like term or not? Um, well, we can see here they do have the same variable, but the exponents are definitely different. So they are definitely not like terms, right? Uh, but something like seven um, x y squared and eight y squared x, this is still gonna be a like term because we have the same exponent x and the same um, term y squared right there, right? So this is definitely gonna be an example of, um, of like terms. So I hope that kind of makes sense there. So what do the following, um, what do the following expressions mean? Um, and the reason I want to go over this um, is just so I want you to kind of understand, to give you examples of what expressions look like and what they actually mean in terms of, uh, in terms of solving an equation, right? Uh, we're going to get to solving equations later on, but what they actually mean and putting it in context. So if I were to give you an expression like negative 3x plus 5y, what this really means is I'm saying that 
I have some value x, some number x that I'm not really sure of, but when I multiply and, and then I multiply by negative three, and then I am going to take another value that I don't know, which is y, and this is another value, and I'm gonna multiply it by five. And then when I'm done, I'm gonna simply add up the two different answers there. That's what that expression means there. And something like a minus two b minus six c, what this means is some number a, uh, any number a, I'm not sure what it is, minus two, uh, sorry, minus two times some, num uh, some other number b, uh, minus six times some other number C, right? Um, and when we're doing, when we're looking at an expression like this, just so we're kind of clear on this, um, there are two different ways you can interpret this. You can either think of it as A minus two times B. And instead of actually writing the multiplication sign, I'm gonna use this. So multiplication, just letting you know that that means multiplication there when I use that little dot. Um, and then we're saying minus six times C there. Um, so what we're doing is we're simply just saying we're multiplying some number times two and some other number times six. And then we're simply gonna be taking the first number minus that second answer minus the third answer there. Um, and we can also think of it as, I don't wanna confuse you too much. We could also think of this right here <clears throat> as negative two multiplied by B, right? Um, and then if you have negative two multiplied by B, you would simply be adding the answer on there. So there's different ways to interpret it. And we kind of talked about that because adding a negative number is the same as subtracting it. So you can look at it two different ways there. Um, so in this slide, I just kind of want to go through a um, couple things in, in uh, when you're working with algebraic expressions that can sometimes be a little bit confusing and what they actually mean. So we talked about the first one there. Um, if I give you an expression like 2ab together, what that means is it's 2 times a times b, right? We're simply multiplying the three different, um, the, the two different variables and the coefficient there together. Um, if I have something like 3x times 2y, what that means is I have 3x multiplied by 2y. I am basically saying I'm multiplying these two different terms together, right? Um, and normally what I do when I, um, when I multiply an expression like this, and again, we're, we're going to talk about this a little bit more. So if you're ever look, if you're looking at this and thinking, where is this coming from? Uh, don't stress about it. We will cover this in the next uh, lesson a lot more in a lot more detail, but essentially what we're saying is we're simply multiplying. We can actually multiply the two numbers together separately. Uh, and that's where we're getting the three times two from. And then we can multiply the two variables separately, X and Y. And that gives us a total of our, the product is 6XY. Um, the next example I kind of wanted to go through, just kind of expressions that, and just making sure that you know what they mean. Um, something like negative 2X. Uh, we actually talked a little bit about this when we did powers. Um, you can actually interpret it a different way. And the negatives really seems to throw people off. There is always a different way to interpret it. And it's, sometimes it's helpful. You can actually think of it as negative 1 multiplied by 2X. We're simply just taking this term 2x and multiplying by the negative one. Um, and that's what we're saying there. And keep in mind that this is different than something like negative two. Um, if I had negative two x squared, like if I have an expression like this, this is not the same as negative two x squared. And we kind of talked about this already, but I just want to make sure everyone's kind of clear on that. Um, the importance of the brackets in this case. Um, and the very last expression, or the very last uh, equation I kind of want to look at is um, the fact that the square root of x squared is equal to x, right? And this is going to be extremely, extremely important. Um, we're going to be using this a lot to solve a lot of different problems. Basically, what we notice is that if you want, if you, if you take a number and you square it and then you take the square root, you actually end up at that number again. And you can try this out with any number here. Um, and this is a general rule in math. If I were to take a number like four and then I square it, and then I ask you to take the square root of that, I end up just getting four. And you can try it out with a couple numbers. If I take five, I square it, and then take the square root, I end up getting five. <clears throat> and this is, an, is, this is a rule that works with um, any number, it doesn't matter what number it is. And this is what the principle basically says, that if you square a number and then you take the square root, you end up with X again. And this is gonna be a very powerful rule to work with um, because we're gonna be using this to solve a lot of different problems that come up later on. Um, so first, um, there's really only one example that has 
a little bit of math involved here. Uh, so let's look at an example where we write an algebraic expression and then we use it to solve a problem. So in this example, we are given the square that has an area of 500 centimeters squared. Uh, what is the side length of the square? So because the area is 500 centimeters squared, we know that um, we have two different sides. And actually, I'll draw a picture here. Um, essentially, what we have here is a square like this. And we have, obviously, a length and a width. <clears throat> um, but because it's a square, we know that the length and the width are actually going to be the same. So instead of writing length and width, it actually might be easier to simply um, uh, create a variable to represent the side length. So what I decided to do for in this case is simply represented by x. So I let this be x, and of course the other side length will also be x as well. Um, and I know that in a square, all the sides are equal. So that's why I simply represented each of the side lengths by x there. So what do we know? If we, well, we know that if, they, if there's a real numbers to find the area, you would simply take the length and the width. Um, and that's quite easy, right? We know that the area is length times width. But in this case, because uh, the dimensions are both x, um, then we are simply going to take x times x. And x times x gives us x squared. Um, and then our almost last step here, since we know that the area is equal to 500 centimeters squared, what we simply do is we replace our area in this equation here with 500. And now we're almost near the end. Now we notice that um, that 500 is equal to some number times itself. So if we want to work backwards and just find out what x is itself, um, you could do guess and check, but I'm, I'll be honest, it's going to take you a little bit long because it's not necessarily going to work out. It's not going to be that 500 is not a perfect square. So you, it's not like you can take the square root of, uh, sorry, it's not like you can find an exact whole number that multiplies by itself to give you 500. So our best bet is actually to use um, a square, is to take the square root. So we're gonna take the square root of 500. And the reason we take the square root again is because we know that taking the square root of a number squared actually cancels it out and we end up with the number itself. So knowing that rule, knowing this principle in math, we know that we can take the square root and it will simply get, get, us, back, uh, get us back to the original number itself without the square. So if I take the square root, I actually end up getting 22.4 centimeters. And then we can verify that this is correct. So on your calculator, 22.4, mind you, I rounded this, multiplied by 22.4. Um, and obviously this is gonna be rounded. Um, so keep in mind that the answer is not fully accurate. Uh, let's just see what I get. I end up getting 501.76, uh, which is extremely close to 500, right? Um, so obviously it can be even more accurate than that, but I just decided to round it to one decimal place. So I hope that kind of makes sense. Um, and that's basically it for the lesson today. It wasn't, like I said, it wasn't too much, uh, weren't too many details. Um, most of it was just terminology, but I hope this last example really made sense because uh, this will be something that we repeat a couple of times. All right, and there are the homework questions. Um, you're gonna see that two questions actually come from section 2.4. So we'll kind of skip the head a little bit. Um, uh, like I said, today's lesson was pretty short. Uh, tomorrow's lesson will definitely have more work um, because obviously we don't have a test, so we have a bit more time. And that's everything for today.